August 18, 2023. This is the S&P 500 E futures mini on the 2000 tick chart, the Ninja Trader 8 platform. Go look down at the descriptions below. You can see where I take my took my trades as well as time stamped of where I thought I saw setups. There was no piece of economic data that really moved the market today. As you can see, it looked like from the pre-market highs, which is about here, the pre-market low, roughly about here, this has kind of stayed in this gigantic trading range, but it didn't really confirm the tops and bottoms too many times. It did create its own little sub trading ranges. Like there's this big yellow one that pretty much started at two hours after the open and it went all the way pretty much into the close. There were some swings and just like the rest of the week, today's trading, I would say, and categorize it as being kind of noisy. There were no real clean, obvious trades to take. And it just kind of seemed like it was that way for this whole week. There was a lot of battling and a lot of suspect trades, a lot of what I would call almost setups. The setups were almost there, but they were a little risky. Definitely some of them were to worked out, but they just seemed like uh, you'd have to be a little more confident in your chart read, or you'd just be taking a slightly bigger risk. So I managed to take three trades today. One of them was break even, one of them was red, one of them was green. So in the grand scheme of things, I guess you could say I'm kind of a break-even type of day. To go through the trades today, it was kind of choppy. And as I said, like the rest of the week, there were a lot of almost setups. So this is a pre-market. Pre-market has some these nice kind of big swings, but I'm not here to trade during that time. When the market opened, it created this move up, and it looked like it was respecting this low of the pre-market it broke out so this could be considered a fail breakout but there's no setup on top of that this is the very first minute of the open and it's usually typically very very choppy during that time so to take an entry is a little risky because price action could just whipsaw and stop you out before you you know really can get an idea of where the direction of the prices are going so i had a channel go moving up it sold off it broke through at first entry short Second entry short, but I don't like the second entry short since they're above the EMA, so I have to leave those alone. I definitely don't think it's a failure to go long, even though it is the bottom of this channel, excuse me, bottom of this range. You don't have enough confirmation price action yet to confirm that you're actually in a range. Could this actually be one leg down, consolidation in a second leg down? So you don't know that yet, but I had to sit on my hands and wait. The first setup I actually saw was right here. I created a new high, obvious new high, first entry long, good signal bar for the first entry long. I mean, second entry long. Now, the second entry long, it, I didn't really like this second entry long, long for the reason that it's coming off the bottom of this range that I established. On top of that, this signal bar is a little bit too neutral, and it's kind of in the middle of the range now. So, in the middle of the range, you're thinking it's going to go up. You already gobbled up pretty much half of the move. It's already uh, taken up by the where the handle closed. So, it kind of left it a little bit iffy. I thought I wanted to wait for a confirmation setup. You do get a higher low confirmation setup right here. It actually picked one tick below and it flashed up. The reason I didn't like this trade is you just broke out of this trading range. Now, this trading range, I wasn't sure if it actually had been a little bit higher, maybe here. But nevertheless, it just broke out of this trading range. It could be a fail breakout. It's a very strong bullish bar, but you really don't know because it could be one leg up. Consolidation is second leg up, or it could kind of come back down into this trading range here and chop around some more. So I wasn't sure, so I had to let it go. Prices continue moving up. It was falling within this channel, but I didn't see any good clean setups. As I said, throughout pretty much every single day this week, there were a lot of second entries, but there weren't a lot of clean, high probability second entries. So if you saw a second entry long, if you took it or you saw a second entry short, they just felt a little bit more riskier. And I tried to avoid those trades just because if it works out, you could be developing or I could be developing a bad habit. Or if I lose, then I'll be kicking myself for taking a trade that wasn't really um, wasn't really high probability, which also develops bad habits. Then prices continue chopping left and right. It falls into what I think is a trading range here breaks out, moves back up. So this could be a fail breakout, although this breakout is quite large. It pretty much extends the entire width of the range. So I'm a little suspect of whether this range is even valid anymore. Comes up, breaks through the other side. And at this point, I wasn't sure if this beige range was in effect, because you do have a breakout here or overshoot. 
you have a matching overshoot here. So knowing that, I was just a little more weary of taking any setups if it gets close to the bottom or top of the ranges. Drops around. I draw this. This isn't a channel at this point. I just drew this as a trend line moving up, and I like that there was support here. I wasn't 100% sure where the top of this range was. Excuse me, top of the channel. Could have been down here. Could have been a spike. Drop around, then the channel actually started. So I knew I had the trend line down here as a support. And then once this broke out, then I actually extended this upwards to think, okay, maybe it's actually up here. Price is chop. It almost reaches the top, but it doesn't. It keeps floating. There are some setups in here, but they're not high probability. I do see a new high here, first entry long. Here, I do see a second entry long setting up. The, the problem with this second entry long is, although it's above the EMA, this is a terrible signal bar. It's not really giving you much information on whether the momentum is going to continue to the long side or to the short side. Even though it bounced off the bottom of this ascending channel, because you had one, two, maybe three, depending on how you counted it, four confirmations, it just came up. So you're thinking it might make one move up, pull back and make a second move up. However, had this actually closed a little bit more bullish with a little bit more body than just this doji, I'd feel a little more comfortable taking this trade. I would have taken it one tick above. As you can see, the next candle flashes up. I would have gotten filled. And then this candle for sure would have gotten me the scalp. But for sure, after this candle closed, it felt too late to try to chase the trade just because the localized high is already too close. So I had to let that trade go. Fortunately, this is, as I said, an almost setup. Kind of reaches the top. It confirms the top of this channel. You typically want a third touch, but this is good enough for now. Because I was playing with the idea of maybe it's actually a little bit lower. I have more confirmations here, but I wasn't keen on the idea of having this overshoot and this overshoot and this one here. So I just kind of dragged to the top, knowing that right now prices are turning bullish. It wasn't as important to me to get the top of this channel as accurate as I needed the bottom because I needed the bottom for support every time I'm going to try to go long I need to have more confidence that the support is going to hold resistance doesn't really matter because I'm not looking to go short anyways and the prices continue moving EMA is holding right now you have a first entry short here technically you have a second entry short but you do not I do not want to take a short right here with the EMA creeping right up above right below it but let it go prices continue chopping I see another setup here. This is the localized high. First entry long pulls back. This is a second entry long. Technically, the second entry long is made right here. But this is a terrible signal bar, followed by the second trigger bar afterwards isn't giving you much confidence it's going to push through. Plus, you're coming up against the EMA. So at this time, I'm thinking maybe there's a correction. Maybe there's a failed second entry short. It's actually first entry long. Second entry long continuing. Here, since it had trouble breaking through the EMA, I'm thinking there's a potential failure here. But if I took this failure, my concern is I might bounce off of here. And that just didn't feel uh, like there's enough room to scalp out. Or this ascending channel, you're going to potentially run into the same support that you were, that I was originally thinking of taking longs off of. So it does come down, it touches, and I'm wondering if it's going to bounce. It looks like it's going to bounce. So you technically could say it's a first entry long, second entry long failure. Here, it would be technically a third entry long, and I don't want to take third entry long, even though the bottom of this channel is showing support and it has showed support in the past. The trade just doesn't feel safe anymore. So then it looks like it chopped around, and had I taken this trade long here, most likely it would have gotten stopped out on this candle, and then, of course, the price action would have moved in the direction I thought it was going to move. Here, I'm very sure if I took my entry here, I still would have been stuck in the trade, even if I had my stop, say, down here. Here, would chop around, and I'd still be stuck in this trade, and I would be thinking probably to get out at this point. So it's a good thing I just didn't enter this trade at all. There's a new low here. First entry short pulls back. This could be a second entry short. Second entry short is confirmed and formed, but this was a terrible signal bar. It's a doji. Not only is it a doji, it closed right on the EMA. So you have no idea which which side is going to win. You do have this ascending channel. It's the first time it broke out. It tried one push up. You could argue it's trying to try and make a second push up, in which case, if it's going to make another push upwards, you would not be thinking to go short. It was a little bit confusing and conflicting, inform conflicting information, so I decided to just sit on my hands. Turns out this second entry short would have worked. However, in real time, it's hard to know that for sure because you don't see that. You just see this. And you think that this could be potentially the low. Then it flashes through. 
pops around. Keep in mind, I don't have this yellow trading range yet. It comes in much later. But I do have this channel potentially going up. Pops around. And this has actually evolved. It used to be a little bit smaller. It was shorter. I actually had to tighten short and trend channel here. Consolidation, another trend channel. I actually thought I saw a measured move one up, then a second move up. It broke out and entered this trading ch trend channel again. That consolidates. And I thought, okay, maybe there's some kind of resistance up here. And I first played it as a range, which is this blue box. It is kind of consolidating and then it breaks down through. And at this point, I wasn't sure. So I didn't, I was playing with the idea that potentially this is the top of a trading range and this could be the bottom. But in this time of day, this wasn't firmed up. So I actually didn't have it on my chart at that point. And it flashes down, chops around. It looks like it's EMA is being respected as some kind of barrier. Then it actually breaks through, pushes over the EMA and comes up. And then it chops around. I see no clean entries. Technically, I have a first entry long here, pulls back. Technically, I have a second entry long, but you wouldn't have thought to go long on this terrible signal bar. Prices continue moving down. I screw this shortened trend channel coming down. And I was playing with potentially with an idea that this might be a, another channel, this red one here. It breaks through. So this red one doesn't seem as valid anymore, but it did have one touch, two touch. I'm just leaving it here for now. It breaks out. I do see a new low, excuse me, a second entry short set up here. This is a new low, the first entry short. Second entry short. Now we see this, it's kind of far from the EMA, which is this blue line right here. Let's see if I can highlight it. It's far from the EMA, it's above the EMA. And I don't want to be shorting from above into the EMA. If there was a second entry short failure, but it had to be pretty close to here, then I'd consider taking the trade. Comes down, actually doesn't bounce off the EMA, breaks through, and continues downwards. So there's a no trade there. I didn't mean to do that. Let's see. So this touch and this touch kind of help make you make me believe that there's a pop there. And this is moving down. As I said, it kind of came down. And when it touched here, that's where I decided, okay, I might be in this big trading range because I had two confirmations, two confirmations at the top. It was a pretty solid confirmation. It couldn't break through. Tested it a second time. It couldn't. And then this one here, I just want another confirmation for the third touch that I be a little more confident. So as I said, uh, this is the second entry short. The prices continue moving, short and trend channel going up. I did see this as a new low here. First entry short, second entry short. Here, I'm not really thinking of going short. I'm thinking maybe it's stuck within this beige looking range. So there's a potential it could be a failed second entry short. And it actually creates its failure right here. But I didn't like taking this trade, especially when you see this. If this closed a little bit more bullish, then I would have a trade ready, but it didn't. So when this flashed up, now it felt like it was too late to enter this trade. Because otherwise, I would had to put my entry way back here. But I don't like putting it way back here. It just felt like the trade has already been made. The scalp's already been made. And taking an entry here, I just feel like you're running into the risk of either having a rejection up here or rejection up here. Then I do see a higher low. The same reason the higher low is great to confirm the failed second entry short to go long. The problem with this higher low is it's right here. It's only two one tick below the recent high. So you'd be pushing into that recent high and asking for price action to not only push up further, but probably hit this resistance here to get your scalp. And I don't like the odds on that, so I had to definitely leave it alone. Price is pushed through. And this is where I actually see a new high, the first entry long pulls back. This created a second entry long. I was thinking potentially a second entry long here, but when this flashed up, I was too late to enter. It actually opened right here, same high, flashed down and moved up. And by the time I decided I wanted to take the trade, it was already it already made the scalp that I wanted. So I definitely had to just leave the trade. Then I also saw actually this is a bigger visual. One leg down pulls up, second leg down, and this is a second opportunity to enter this trade on a long. It's like a visual second entry long, new high, first entry long, pulls back. Potential second entry long, plus it's confirming the bottom of this channel. And the top of this channel is getting nice confirmation. But it was right at the EMA, so I wasn't ready to take this trade mentally. And I just watched it kind of run away without me. Kind of goes to show I just need a little bit more, I guess, uh, 
feet time to be more ready to take these type of trades. There's also a new low here, first entry short, second entry short, but this is a terrible signal bar to try to go short. Continues, it confirms bottom of this channel again, which is great. Moves up, it touches the top, breaks out barely. And I'm watching to see if it's going to pull back in. It does. It comes back, hits here. Now I'm wondering if it's like a new high, first entry long, potentially a second entry long. I see this. I think there's a potential second entry long here, but now it's kind of breaking through. It had an overshoot here and overshoot on this side. So I wasn't 100% sure. I left it alone. Looks like it would have filled you. Comes back down, and my stop would have been one tick below here. It looks like it would have stopped me out if I had taken that trade. However, it's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. Kind of, it's a failed second entry long, but it creates a lower high. So now, if you're thinking of going short, which I think in this time was probably about to happen because it looked like it was testing the top of this range. So this range, it touched the bottom, touched the top. Halfway, came back, touched the top, hit the bottom, went all the way up to the top, had an overshoot, a failed breakout. And now potentially I'm thinking it's going to come back down. So this is actually, after all that time, my first trade of the day. As you can see, there's only about an hour left in trading. And I decided like this is a lower high. And I took this entry one tick below this triple test or triple bottom. And actually, when I took this, I didn't think about how close I was to the low. And so when it filled and started chopping around, I instantly thought this was not a good idea to do. It was actually a poor trade to have taken. And I was looking for about a point and a half scalp. But a point and a half scalp is not going to make it when the bottom is already right here. So I decided I was just going to try to get out break even. So that's what I did on this candle when it was flashing around. It actually pulled up really high. I didn't like the looks of that, so I decided I was just going to exit one tick below my short entry just to get break even. I entered, was able to get filled, and then of course then it moves down further. Now, typically when I enter a trade, I try not to move my stops and my profit target just because I have to I have to believe in the trade and not kind of uh, mess around with it after the fact, unless it's kind of consolidating for a while with a lot of candles, not hitting the stops or the limits. And I would consider getting about break even. But at this time of day, when it looked like that, and I took an entry already, I should have just left it alone or just net, not have taken the trade at all in the first place. So this is kind of a, it ended up would have worked out if I had been more patient and trusted the trade. But it was hard for me to trust the trade because I didn't fully analyze and believe, if you will, the trade. The rest continue moving down. I wasn't sure if it's falling within this orange channel because it looked like it was initially or this red channel this is actually where i take my second trade the new low first entry short pulls back and i was thinking there's a second entry short setting up now i, th I thought this was a decent trade setup initially but then in hindsight i realized it really wasn't a good setup because i was basing it off the strength of this channel coming down and one touch two touch a small little breakout and here i thought it was going to be a fail breakout it went out and it immediately flashed back down. So I thought there was going to be enough momentum to carry me down for at least a one point scalp. And the bottom of this range is kind of confirmed twice, but typically you want a third touch. So I actually jumped on this trade right here, one tick below. And when it closed Doji, I, well, when I entered it, I already thought this wasn't a good idea. Closed Doji, it made me for sure regret taking this trade. On top of that, my stop was one tick above here. This is a gigantic candle. On regular trading days, not like today, this is actually a really tiny candle, but today's price action was very small. The average true range wasn't that big. So this three point, three, three point plus risk wasn't worth it. And as it chopped around, I still held on. And then, of course, it stops me out. Prices continue moving up. And at that time, I didn't consider this new low, first entry short, pull back, second entry short, failed second entry short especially when this candle flashed up and over. I should have considered that, but I didn't because I was already in the short trade to consider going long. So that was uh, definitely a, not a trade to have taken. And prices continue moving up, falls into this channel. It breaks out of this channel and aggressively overshoots. This blue line here is actually the... Oh, this blue line actually should not be here. This blue line is an important. I think this is a carryover from something else. 
But this gray line, this top of this line here, that was a pre-market high. So not only it breaks out of the pre-market high, it looks like it's going to create an overshoot. This is aggressive push up off of no news. As I was watching, it started coming down and then it created a higher, a lower high. And I thought, okay, this lower high, there's a lot of momentum pushed up. This could be a fail breakout of this larger channel. So I'm thinking there's a fail breakout here. Prices might move back in. I will admit this isn't a clean setup. I thought it was a fail breakout. It is a lower high confirming here. Enough room to the EMA. So I actually jumped in on this trade. And I will admit this isn't the cleanest, uh, most best reason to take this trade. But I had a hunch that you know it was going to push back down. So I entered right here and I was able to scalp out pretty quickly for just a point because I wanted to get out before I hit the bottom or the, excuse me, hit the top of this pre-market trading range and also the EMA, which are coming together. So this could act like a very strong support. So I just saw an opportunity for a quick one point scalp. Then prices continue moving down. Had I just kind of held on, it would have worked out. But of course you don't know that it's going to work out. And I didn't know that it was going to re-enter this yellow trading range. It looks like it did. And then this is like the last, on top of that, this is a late trade. There's only 10 minutes left, but I saw it and I wanted to try it out. That's never, uh, definitely not a good reason. To, I just want to try it out, but I should have taken it probably on a simulated trade. I took it and it worked out. And then of course it just kind of chops around and goes into the close. So overall this today, as well as the rest of this week has been some pretty noisy trading. It wasn't, setups weren't as easy or obvious to identify. I didn't, I don't think there was really any easy trading day this week. And every day has been kind of a challenge to figure out where prices were actually doing because there were ugly choppy trading ranges or trading ranges that didn't have consistent tops and bottoms. But it definitely has been an interesting learning experience. So hopefully that was helpful.